The only wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. BGP eVPN was originally focused on constructing layer 2 VPN over IP wide area network. But it gained traction as a way to create data center fabric overlays. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video we will learn about eVPN in data center. What eVPN brings several advantages to the table for the data centers. The primary requirement when building an interconnection network for a large network of servers is to accommodate application bandwidth and latency requirements. It is common to see the majority of the traffic is entering and leaving the data center which we refer to as north-south traffic. Traditionally, three-tier architecture was sufficient to accommodate such flows, even high oversubscription ratio between the layers of the network. If more bandwidth was required, it was added by scaling up the network elements such as upgrading the line cards or fabric or replacing the devices with high port density. Another factor is load balancing is a critical function performed by network devices. Traditionally, load balancer are deployed as a dedicated servers in the traffic forwarding path. Usually, the three-tier design for north-south traffic, which requires correct spanning tree configuration, and spanning tree issues are notorious for causing network outages as spanning tree failure cause continuous loops. VLAN was used for segregation and routing between the core and the aggregation layer. So it provides a limited scalability due to a hierarchical structure. With the exponential growth of servers and the extension of data center switching layer, more than 70% of the traffic today moves from server to server, what we consider as east-west traffic. Traditionally, data center more concerns with speed in and out of data center, nor within the server to server communication. So for east-west traffic flow, which can result in bottleneck in three-tier architecture. So it can leads to a scaling traditionally in three-tier architecture to match these bandwidth demand becomes either too expensive or impossible due to the physical limitations. A preferable solution would be able to scale the load balancing horizontally by adding more of the uniform nodes and distributing incoming traffic across the nodes. A common design for horizontally scale topology in large data center in order to meet the requirements and these horizontally scaled topology is folded class topology or sometimes called as fat tree. Some of the key properties of class topologies are the topology is fully non-blocking or more accurate non-interfering. Utilizing the topology requires control plane and data plane support for ECMP. Also, it will address the oversubscription ratio by the factor of n slash m, which is M is the uplink and N is the downlink. So from the cross topology, the leaf and spine architecture has been designed. How do leaf and spines solve bottleneck issues? Spine leaf architecture is to add east-west traffic parallelism to the north-south network architecture to the backbone. Fundamentally, solving the bottleneck problems of the traditional three-tier architecture. Compared to the traditional 3-tier architecture, the spine leaf architecture provides connection through the spine with a single hop between the leaves, which will minimize any latency and bottlenecks. So it will increase the redundancy. Leaf connected to multiple spines, which creates a large non-blocking fabric, increase the level of redundancy and reducing the traffic bottleneck. Performance enhancement, scalability, Spine leaf architecture has multiple links that can carry traffic. In addition, switches will improve scalability and help enterprise or the data centers to expand as per the need. But there is a challenge with the leaf and spine architecture. In a pure layer 3 fabric, the layer 2 domains are quite small and usually confined to a rack. As a result, challenges in host mobility and layer 2 communications are there. So VXLAN, one of the many available network virtualization overlay technology, use underlay IP and extend the layer two segments over a layer three fabric. VXLAN flood and learn compiles with ITF standard and which defines a multicast based flood and learn without a control plane. Basically data plane learning when frame needs to be sent to an unknown destination 
the sender needs to know the destination MAC address and sends a broadcast query to all the destination MACs. The VXLAN flood and learn does not have any control plane. So the multicast group scaling needs to be designed carefully, ideally map on VXLAN segments to one of the IP multicast to the group to provide optimal forwarding. Also, we, we can have multiple VXLAN segments share a single IP multicast group in the core. However, the overloading of multicast groups leads to suboptimal multicast forwarding. So the end host information learning and the VTAP discoveries are both done in the data plane and no control plane protocols to be used before. To overcome this limitation, leaf and spine architecture use MPBGP eVPN as a control plane for VXLAN. This provides a complete isolation for control plane and data plane learning. The first benefit that BGP eVPN for VXLAN provides control plane learning and ARP suppression. Once a leaf learned the MAC address from through the ARP, BGP route type 2 will advertise that to all the leaves. This immediate benefit of using BGP for this case is that we know how well BGP protocol scales. We won't have any problem learning hundreds and thousands of MAC entries in the BGP table. The MAC addresses as routing entries in the routing table and forwarding decisions based on this. This means that we can use multiple active paths between data centers as per the next hop from which it learned. Next benefit is multi-homing. We want two gateway devices at the edge of our data centers so that we can support multi-homing scenarios. eVPN allows for an all active multi-homing scenarios. Beside this, we need to limit the flooding of the traffic, which is a reason why we choose designated forwarder as for the instance, which is responsible for receiving the bump traffic and then the other non-DF will block that. Basically, we also support split horizon to prevent the traffic originating from our own data centers. Next is the MAC mobility. The eVPN feature designed for the fast convergence. Another big issue within the data center is what we call as MAC mobility and flapping. The means of VM moves the MAC address need to be relearned with the network and the old entry should be deleted with the help of BGP route type 2 provided by the sequence number of that route type, it will delete the old entries. eVPN supports IRB allowing both intra-subnet layer 2 and inter-subnet layer 3 forwarding. Distributed Anycast gateway functionality provides for optimal forwarding since end host can use the local gateway to send traffic outside the IP subnet and the IRB interface which act as a layer 3 gateway for a tenant can be redistributed across the different leaps. So the default gateway extended community is needed in MAC IP advertisement routes for IRB interface when different MAC addresses are configured. Without eVPN, data center interconnect have posed challenges in the past due to layer two traffic and the limited traffic control options. However, the advancement have been made to address these concerns and the provided more scalable and flexible solution. eVPNs, provide this solution for the data center interconnect. So data center interconnect using gateway, typically interconnecting data center over WAN, eVPN routes are terminated and processed in each gateway and the MAC IP routes always re-advertised for data center to WAN by the WAN to data center. They are not re-advertised if it's unknown MAC and IP addresses. The second scenario is data center interconnect using without gateway. Data center interconnect devices does not need to maintain large MAC VRF and IP VRF tables. Also do not need to terminate and process routes related to the multi-homing, but it relay the message for establishment of end-to-end -end label switch path such as interface option B. This is what we discuss about why we need eVPN in the data center with the, all the benefits that has been there with using eVPN in the data center. Going forward, we will now deep dive into the packet flow of eVPN. Thank you for watching this video. Please share your feedback in the comment box. I will get back to you.